Are you seeking a husband? Or are you in the position, posture, and preparedness in which a righteous man of valor will find you? The scripture says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from God Almighty Yah. It is a man who has been prepared and led by Yah, who is guided in purpose and intent to find a woman whom Yah has prepared as a wife. A man does not simply go looking for a woman to make his wife. A man finds a woman who is already a wife. A woman must be anointed to be a wife. A woman must already be prepared, set apart, and marked by a divine sovereign seal as a wife in title and appointment. Being divinely appointed as a wife means receiving the mantle of a wife by which a man discerns and recognizes the woman Yah has specially, specifically, and uniquely created, prepared, purified, sanctified, consecrated, and hidden just for him. A woman who merely thinks she is ready to be married is not a wife. A woman looking for a man in her life is not a wife. A woman using seduction strategies to attract a man is not a wife. A woman using manipulation tactics, including an especially performative femininity, to grab men's attention is not a wife. A beautiful woman is not a wife. Scripture gives us stunning examples of women who drank their water and minded their business when they were chosen by men of renown and prestige the true high-value men of their era. Shout out Kevin Samuels. <laughs> For example, Hadassah, an orphaned Hebrew maiden, was disguised, her identity changed, and given a new name as Queen Esther. She was purified for an entire year, undergoing sacred ancient ceremonies and beauty regimens, trained in feminine embodiment practices and sensual artistry, perfumed with sacred oils, perfumes, and ointments, and cleansed from within by herbal remedies and womb steams, similar to the Kayan Mata traditions passed down till this very day in West and Northern Africa and the Middle East. After her time of purification and preparation, she was chosen out of hundreds of the most beautiful single ladies of the Persian Empire's many colonies, she was chosen by the ruler of the largest empire, a man who possessed nearly all of the known world at that time. He was able to recognize something different and set apart about her that made her stand out among the multitude of attractive and eligible women. Ruth was a widow a foreigner in a strange land, living alone with her dead husband's mother among a tribe belonging to a nation unfamiliar to her. She was humbly and diligently working in the field in which she was to be found and granted favor by her kinsman redeemer, Boaz. Working in the field can be representative in modern times of women who are focused on their self-improvement, etiquette, education, entrepreneurship, and or on their own artistry, skills, and craftsmanship. It is important to note that this is different from being a domineering, ambitious, career-driven boss babe, operating in pseudo-masculinity, headed speedily towards inevitable burnout like many of today's feminist women. Ruth was not seeking a husband. She was serving as a humble daughter, caring for herself and her late husband's mother. Working a literal field, she was seen and her mark was recognized by the owner of the field. Rebecca. Rebecca was a maiden who was simply at the right place at the right time to be discovered by Abraham's servant, whom he'd sent on a long journey to bring back a bride for his precious son Isaac. She was humble and well-mannered enough to offer to serve the servant drawing water from the well to give the servant and his camels enough to drink until they were full, a task that is much more arduous a workout than we might assume. Having traveled to and lived in Ghana myself for a time, 
I witnessed many young women who walked long distances to carry heavy water on their heads back home, which makes me appreciate this story much more. She was obedient to her father, and once he'd given his blessing, she accepted the fine jewels and adornment gifted to her by Abraham through his servant, and she was willing to go, leave her family and country, to marry a man whose face she had not even seen. A woman is not a wife just because she is a virgin or in a season of celibacy. A woman is not a wife simply because she has prayed for a husband. A woman is made a wife, marked as a wife and anointed as a wife through a process, a refining by the fires of trial and tribulation, purified in the fire like gold by Yah, the divine alchemist. A woman who receives the mantle of a wife is found in the secret place, often during a time of isolation or separation. Separation from her family, from her culture, from her hometown, from her old life, from her circle of friends she's outgrown. A woman is veiled, even hidden in plain sight, by a supernatural covering that shields her from the eyes of predators counterfeits, imposters, and placeholders, so that she may be discerned and recognized only by the husband who has been prepared for her and for whom she has been prepared. I ask again, are you looking for a husband or are you ready to accept the process of preparation through which you will be found minding your own business and recognized as a wife by the kingdom spouse ordained and destined just for you. Join me, sisters and daughters, on this journey to understanding your true purpose as a woman and the true anointing of a wife. Learn what is expected of a wife and the subtle yet stunningly powerful influence a wife can truly have to change the world with the right divine masculine by her side. Need I say more? Keep your notifications on for registration details emerging and some surprises leading up to when registration officially opens. Stay tuned for more information about the accompanying Savannah, Georgia retreat option entitled Teshucha, Divine Desire, scheduled for summer 2024. Until then, let this be your mantra, your affirmation, your prayer and divine agreement. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. God bless.